had a little sun yesterday afternoon it warmed up a little bit and I epoxied these trim boards into place and the epoxy kind of said it set enough for me to get the clamps off but not enough to sand yet covered this back trim with three layers of this uh, six ounce mat and I used epoxy resin so I'm covering the boards not so much to keep them from rotting this is really good cypress but just to make a better um, substrate for paint so it won't crack boards tend to expand and contract with moisture and it's hard to keep a good paint film on them and <clears throat> I'm going to switch to epoxy resin because it's going to be thin it's not going to be a huge amount of plastic so it needs to really stick better epoxy is always sticks to wood better than the polyester resin although it's kind of a pain to work with it's kind of sticky and like trying to spread honey when you do use this woven cloth you end up with a finish that's a whole lot easier to fare out it's uh it's not as lumpy as when you use uh, csm or the combo mats just uh, takes very little fairing to get it ready for paint all right, that went smooth, smooth, smooth. I got three layers of, I think it's nine ounce cloth all the way across the back. It's not really structural. It's mostly to give me a good paint surface. Um, and now I'm going to sand this floor back here again and put my really first full skim coat on this last section of plywood. I haven't done that yet. And I want to do that before I cut the hole, the hatch hole I got a hatch back here. It's going to be easier to skim coat this big area before I cut the hole for the hatch. wet epoxy on the floor and wet epoxy on the back trim I just need to get out of this boat for the rest of the day because I'm just going to mess up if I stay in here so I'm going to pick up everything and get out and uh, hopefully this will set up before it rains this afternoon I think it will I recently read a quote that said uh, building a boat is 90% sanding. I don't know if that's true. It's got to be. It's got to be more than that. I think it's more than that. Purchased a floor hatch for back here. I cut out a cardboard template and I have it marked on the floor. And now I'm having second thoughts on whether I need it or not. Um, certainly it would be nice to be able to reach down in there a little easier. But it would also be nice to have a floor uninterrupted by a big plastic bouncy hatch. So, man. Okay, I'm not going to cut it yet. What I am going to do is finish fairing out this hole and put the bait box in won't be permanent but put it in and that will better guide me as to whether which way to go do I put a floor hatch which would make it nice access but do I need that access or would it be better just to have a smooth strong floor 
Dang it. So I've cut out the front and the top for the back step seats, whatever you want to call them. Um, I've cut them out of the treated plywood that's under the, that was under the um, console. So I cut out that big square and now I've got enough to do these. Um, I'm going to epoxy this joint and then I've cut some angles from the old boat and I'm going to epoxy them on the inside because this needs to be really, really strong. Uh, so the next day we pull the clamps off and uh, they look good. They look strong so far. Everything's lovely. So if you've been following this build on uh, YouTube, you might remember the blue epoxy paint that did not adhere well to the uh, uncured polyester resin when I was doing the stringers. Well, it cures well to other epoxies and it sands easy. So I'm using the rest of it up as a fairing compound. I'm mixing it with thickener and cleaning up some of these edges. Now here I've got the step kind of set into place and the wall's a little lumpy so I'm uh, scribing it to uh, trim the box and make it fit a little bit better. I've got the fiberglass angles screwed and glued on both steps. Um, the steps go like yo and they can be screwed I don't know which way. Um, ideally they could be screwed up with wood screws so the I wouldn't have any trouble with the heads, but there's not a lot of room in there. I think that's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to try to use, um, go ahead and drill these and see if I have some wood screws that are not long enough to go all the way through. It needs to be strong because we got some big friends and that's a step and the other step's going to be cantilevered off of it. And not, man, some of our friends are kind of big. I don't want to name names, but Fred, he's a big unit. So I'm going to make it so it's not going to fail. That's my, that's my objective. It may not be the prettiest in the world, but it's not going to fail. So I pre-drilled all the holes through the plastic, through the fiberglass angle, and I set the box in place and marked all the holes with a pencil, and then I pre-drilled them with a little bitty bit just to help me get these screws started. And I can actually get the screws in from the bottom. I, I tried the hardest one and I could get it, so we're golden. I'm gonna uh, mix up a big batch of epoxy. We're gonna put these on. They're gonna be long forever. You'll have to, you'll, I'll have to break them to get them off. So the big closure panel for the um, bait box is fits perfectly. Thanks for asking. It's lovely. And that makes it apparent that I do need access through the hole in the floor. So I had purchased this larger hatch for this spot, but I think I'm going to use the smaller hatch. This is the one I purchased for up front. I'll have to get another one. So I cut a hole and we have a hatch and this is the smaller hatch that I had and I'm okay with this. It certainly would have been a little more convenient working in there. If I'd have put the big one it would have been a little wider but it wouldn't have been much further this away. And I think that's where the bilge pump needs to go because that's the deepest spot back here in the, bil in the bilge. This is a group 27 battery. Well it's not really a group 27 battery. This is a phone box, the approximate size of Group 27 batteries. I thought they were all the same size, but they're not. But this is a larger average, so almost any Group 27 battery I get will be this big or smaller. I have slid the hatchback a couple of more inches. The battery, the battery would have fit through here, but I didn't, and it doesn't. And I didn't want to at the time because I was trying to save some I was trying to save some meat here. But it will go this way. It will go under the bait tank. And it's not like, you know, you only have to do this once every three years or so. It'll also go in through the side. So if I put the battery 
in here and put it centered in the boat. I just need to make a platform for it right there. That's as far forward as I think I can comfortably get it without uh, screwing with the bilge pump. Make a platform to strap it down. And I think one battery is going to be plenty for the outboard. That's all it will handle. It won't be on anything else. Yesterday I glued and screwed around the interior perimeter like a door stop. And now I'm making a template for the doors. This is because I don't believe they're perfectly square. So doing it this way will take care of that. Add a little hot glue. Doesn't take much. this out of plywood. So I've cut my two doors out of um, treated plywood. This is still scrap from the decking. I think this is the last of it. Anyway, I'm going to set the saw to half inch. Uh, I'm going to set the rip fence to half inch. I'm going to take a half inch off of the perimeter of both of these and replace that with solid lumber because I want to glass these front and back and glass just doesn't do well to the edge of that um, plywood. So just replacing the edge with lumber and uh, glue it up and take a little while for the glue to dry and then we'll glass them. These are my two doors for the back little hatches and the trim is glued and the glue is set so I can take the clamps off of these and cut them to fit. They'll need some trimming and these are the two folding seat bottoms and I glued these yesterday so I can take <clears throat> these clamps off and do the other two sides and these were the uh, Two hatches that I've cut out of the bottom of the boat. So this is good stuff This is the good tree to plywood and it has fiberglass on both sides already. So Save myself a few steps with these So The doors are ready to fit. I did some rough belt sanding on them to kind of knock the glue bumps off And they are tight all the way around. I kind of figured that was going to happen. So I need to Slowly plane the edges until it fits and then I'm going to have to plane side a little more because it didn't take into account I need room for a piano hinge down one side. So I got my little power plane here. Um, it removes wood really fast. I'm just going to start going slowly around until it fits correctly. I need to leave enough room for some fiberglass and a couple layers of paint too. I don't want to get it too tight. If I get it too tight and glass it and paint it and then it rubs I gotta grind the paint off so it doesn't do me any good all right I got a good fit on both doors I think I have room for the hinge and for the coatings uh, but don't laugh at me, Donnie. It's cold. It's in. It's like 42 and it's damp. So I don't think that I should mess with epoxy or polyester. Um, I can bring them inside. I want to round all the corners over a little bit. I haven't put the front on these boxes because I have some little excess doors ordered. And I want those first. But I can sand. I can sand and sand and sand because the cold weather doesn't affect sanding as long as it's dry and it's dry enough to sand. So. Probably get in a couple of good hours of sanding right now. I'm getting ready to drill a vent hole in here in the back wall of this box just for some air circulation. And I'm going to drill a drain hole in the bottom corner. There's water ponds back there. And this would have been much easier to do if I'd have done it before I built the box. And I told myself to do it. And I forgot. So now I'm just going to deal with it. One battery down. My folding seat tops now have trim all the way around the perimeter and it's set. I'm going to remove the clamps, clean them up, cut them to final shape, 
and I think I'm going to put the hardware on them make sure they're going to work before I start worrying about uh, finishing them. I got my little doors in the mail. Um, they're kind of rinky dink, but they're going to work. I'm going to put these here so they barely fit, but I can go ahead and cut the hole in the fiberglass and go ahead and then epoxy the fiberglass in place and go ahead and put some tabbing to lock it into place. And I think I'm going to put fiberglass on this inside surface just to kind of beef it up a little bit. I think the frame's going to be fine. This is kind of soft. And I'm sure this lock set won't last. It's not stainless steel. Probably replace it with a, just something different. But uh, I didn't have a whole lot of choice in finding something this small. So pretty happy with them. So the two seats are now trimmed to size. Um, <clears throat> I rounded all the edges over a little bit. So when I put my trims on, I put one extra wide, and that lets me cut uh, a little curve here and not get into the plywood. So they're they're good. They're ready to go. I very carefully drew some parallel lines, and I very carefully marked the first hole the same distance from the edge. And I'm going to attach the uh, hardware to the seats, and then I'll go attach the hardware into the boat. So the hardware is screwed to the bottom of the steps, and I just use wood screws because that load will always be in compression. Um, there's no way you can try to rip those screws out. But where the hardware bolts to this vertical surface, these screws are going to take a hell of a load. So I'm going to use bolts. I'm going to drill it all the way through. And bolt it with some big washers on the back side. The manufacturer made it a little tricky to get to it with the drill bit. But I got a big giant long drill bit. So I'm going to drill all six holes while this is clamped in place with this straight edge. With this flat piece of plywood. And put the bolts in and let's see what, what happens. So the good news is it's really strong, or strong enough. The bad news is my hardware is hitting the floor. So my problem was I was measuring from the top, and I thought I had enough clearance, but it actually, it's not at the top. And I can't really change that easily. Um, dang. All right, let me scratch my bald head. So by using a straight edge and my tape and the other seat, it looks like I have about a five-eighths of an inch conflict with the floor and the hardware and the seat keeping it from folding all the way down. So the way this hardware is made, I think I can take an inch off the end of it. Um, I can certainly cut the back of the seat a little bit. So, I think that's what I'm going to do. I could either do that or just raise the seat up. But then my top bolt, where I really need them, I'd have to use a screw. And I really don't want to use a screw on the top because that's the one that's going to be in the most tension. So, I'm just going to whack an inch off of the hardware and an inch off of the seat top. I'll have to re glue or something on that and we'll try again later on after that's done. I'm cutting these to make them shorter, that's a piece of cake and I kind of rounded the edges so they wouldn't be so sharp. Um, but a problem is I lost one of the screw holes, and it's the one at the very end. So no problem drilling another screw hole, but it's hard to get to. So I think I'm going to drill a hole through this little handle and through the frame, and then I can put a screw drop. I can slip the screw. Hey, friend. I'll be able to slip the screw under here 
and then slip the screwdriver through this hole. And I think that's what we're going to try. So I cleaned off the inside surface of the little doors. They had some little molding protrusions and stuff, and I sanded it real rough. And I glued last night two flat pieces of um, fiberglass, and a huge difference. Made a big improvement. I'll have to dr just drill the hole where the um, lock set goes, but a big improvement with uh, not much effort. So I was using a crosscut guide on the table saw to cut these little nibs off because I had put this board on extra long. And when I got to the last of the four, I guess I got careless and twisted this a little bit this way, which lets the uh, part of the tooth that's coming up out of the saw touch the back of the board and it spun around and did one of these numbers and put a little, little gouge like in one hundredth of a second uh, which is why I always keep my hands to the front of the blade because it's never going to pull you into the blade it's going to pull things into the blade from the back so if your hands are in the front you might get clobbered by a piece of wood but you shouldn't get your hands in the blade well you shouldn't do that anyway anyway uh, it's nothing that a little epoxy can't patch up. Still have all ten digits. Okay, ends trimmed, surfaces of the new board sanded flat, and then the whole thing ripped down to the final new width of 11 inches from 12 inches. And I've located my first hole and marked them carefully. They're all the same. Pre-drilled them. I'll put that screw in here, and the other ones I'll drill in place. Make sure we won't have any problems. Here I'm snaking that screw up under the little um, lever and uh, what worked out okay, wasn't hard. So with the, uh, the little rectangular hatches in hand, I was confident to cut the hole for them in this little end plate. And I glued it on yesterday. We had a little warm weather. So now, this afternoon, if it warms up enough, I'll round all these corners and I'll go ahead and glass this into place. Right now it's just set in epoxy. And I want more than that. So I just have one bolt in each one because I'm going to take it right back off. But we have success. this kind of close but I think with the piano hinge this door will open all the way up I'm hoping or most of the way up anyway that's pretty good stuff get the other one set pre-drill the holes take it off glass the top glass this a lot of glassing and sanding but the structure is done <clears throat> seat number two is a success again I have a little encroachment problem there that bugs me I thought I had everything back far enough. It, it works good and now I can finish drilling the holes and then take it all apart and uh, finish it and wait for some warm weather it's in the 30s this morning to go for any kind of glue the little hatch doors are in place it's very close here if I round this corner much it's not going to work might have to file a little bit off of this side to scoot it that way and I'm going to be careful when I sand this corner. I won't round it too much because it needs to, uh, I don't want it sticking out. That would look kind of tacky. But uh, they work. So I didn't show it, but I did move the battery out of the bilge. I put them way back there in the corner where you can't hardly see it. And what's left now is just hours and hours of uh, sanding and fairing. And I'm not going to subject you to that. So the next time we show this back area, um, hopefully I'll be putting some primer paint on it. So thanks for watching.